Some of the oldest evidence of life on Earth comes from a very unusual form of sedimentary structure known as a stromatolite. Stromatolites in the Archean provide evidence of early life. But stromatolites occur throughout the geologic record too. And they still exist today, even if they are relatively uncommon and limited to a narrow range of environments. What are stromatolites? Stromatolites are mound-like bioaccretionary structures. Bioaccretionary structures form when organisms aid in sedimentation and lithification. In contrast to sedimentary structures that form from sediment in motion, like wave ripples and desiccation cracks, bioaccretionary structures only form in the presence of life. If you cut a stromatolite open and look at it in cross section, you will see that the mound consists of layers called laminae. These laminae are built up into columns of sediment. The mounds form in shallow water. The inside of the mound is rock and sediment but its exterior surface is covered by thin layers of microorganisms called microbial mats or microbial films. These mats grow and develop on the surfaces of stromatolites and cause the mounds to form and develop over time. Although the stromatolites themselves are solid rock and sediment, the mats have the consistency of a gooey mucus. This mucus is due to the presence of an extracellular matrix secreted by the microorganisms. These microbial mats generally consist of cyanobacteria, filaments or chains of microscopic bacteria that do photosynthesis, converting sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water into oxygen and food. The mounds are created by microbial mats. When sediment is deposited on top of the microbial mats, they become buried and die. But in the process, the sediment grains stick to the gooey mucus, to the extracellular matrix. This helps to trap, bind, and cement the sediment particles to the mound. Over time, the microbial mat will recolonize the surface of the stromatolite and grow on top of the new sediment. Then the process will repeat itself again and again. Sediment will be trapped, binded, and cemented by the microbial mats onto the surface of the mound. The stromatolite will grow upward, layer by layer. This repetitive cycle of sedimentation produces the layers and laminae of the stromatolite. It's a long process. Each lamina is thin, and they are slowly added by the trapping and binding of sediment by microbial mats. So it can take thousands of years for stromatolites to develop into large structures. One of the best places in the world to see stromatolites forming today is called Shark Bay, a protected World Heritage Site located in a lagoon on the western coast of Australia. Today, stromatolites are generally rare. Today, Stromatolites are only found in shallow hypersaline lakes and lagoons like Shark Bay, where high salt levels deter animals from grazing and eating the microbial mats on the surfaces of the stromatolites. The water is generally so salty that you can't sink in it. The water is simply too dense. These salty conditions develop in response to high rates of evaporation 
and poor circulation of the surrounding water. During Precambrian times, stromatolites were far more common. Animals had not yet evolved on Earth, so there was nothing there to consume the microbial mats. They could form in a variety of environments, not just hypersaline lakes and lagoons. That's why many sedimentary strata in the Precambrian contain stromatolytic structures.